What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today's video, I wanted to take a look here and I wanted to kind of walk you through what it looks like to practice a new playbook, uh, just some of the principles, and I, I just think this is going to be a really good follow-up to the video we did earlier where I talked a lot about clarity and the importance of having you know, a filter and asking yourself solid questions to eliminate the things that are unnecessary. Uh, and today we're going to look at that from a schematic standpoint and how you can actually do that when you go into practice mode. And so the problem, here, here's the biggest problem that I've observed again, and I, I've talked about it a couple times, is, is that people, it's not about what you are supposed to do, it's about what you're not supposed to do. Okay, so you want to make a not to do list. And the problem is most people want to focus more on what they're, what they're doing um, than why they do what they do. And so they try to figure out what the right method is. They try to figure out what the right tactic is. And to be honest with you, um, there's no such thing as the right way um, outside of material. You have to consult the right material. Uh, but anyways, here, let's look at this real quick. So I'm just going to select a, a playbook that I haven't, haven't ever really used. Uh, let's see if I can just find something simple. Uh, we'll just use, we'll, we'll use the Washington Redskins playbook. I've never touched it this season at all. And then uh, we'll just go with something random here. We'll go Cincinnati on D. And we'll just play. So we'll load this up here. And while we're, while we're doing that, the, the basic thing that I take into practice mode, and I write this down, we talked about the importance of writing things down earlier. Um, it's, it's to create very, very solid thinking, very, very clear thinking. And so what you want to do is you want to have your practice mode session, and, and I'm going to show you how to find a good play. Uh, but once you find a good play, there's a template that I'm going to give you, and I'll talk about that in another video uh, where we talk about the template for success. And uh, that's going to be a very good video for you guys to check out because it's going to simplify your decision making. But what I really look for when I'm coming into a completely new playbook is I – I try to find one formation that sticks out to me and it could stick out to me for several reasons. The biggest reason that it would stick out to me is that it has one play that is just, you know, just phenomenal, just something that I think really can work well. And you just kind of, again, uh, we talked about this when we were talking about how to lab and how to do things like that. The, which the biggest thing for you to do when you're looking through this stuff is to just try a lot of stuff. Um, you know, normally, and normally, uh, I will say this, normally it's three wide receiver sets for me. That's normally what I go to, what I run to, what I flock to. Uh, so what we'll do, like I'll just look, oh, they have a single back bunch, okay? So they've got, and, and the biggest thing I'm looking for in, in any formation is do they have two plays that complement one another? Most formations do have that, um, but some have better uh, complementary plays that others do. That's why I've ran the Z spot for so long. So here they have Y trail. Looks like a really, really, really powerful play actually, especially to beat cover three defense. Uh, if they have Z spot, so they have Z spot and corner. That's this is a really good single back bunch here. So, so I'm going to mess around with this, um, you know, and and I would do this until I found a formation. So I just keep going through, just kind of looking, uh, looking at the routes, just trying to see if something really catches my eye. And if one thing catches my eye, then I got to figure out, do they have something that complements it? So like iPhone Pro 10 twins, what what kind of running system do they have? Is it So teams will have one of two. They will either have a halfback stretch or they'll have a halfback power out. Normally, in, at least in Madden 17, they won't have much. And I doubt in Madden 18, it would be much different. Um, let's see what they have in the, so they have a pistol bunch. That's that's very good. I, I'm a big fan of that. So the corner strike play. Um, See if they have a post drop from that left guy. They have a, like, no, they don't really have anything good on that. So we'll move on. Uh, let's see. Pistol wide trips. Read option. They have smash with that deep corner route. You just again, you just go through these. Um, let's see here. But they don't have a post route from a guy on the corner. To me, it makes it useless. They have strong power. This is actually kind of neat. Uh, so I'm in, and I'm in Washington, by the way. Uh, let's see here. Split offset. Split offset is normally not that good of a formation. It's it's like it's like half good and half terrible, so it makes it not good. Tight doubles on. The biggest thing you're going to find variety with, uh, variety with, and uniqueness with in formations is two things really: motion snappable routes. So if the receiver could potentially be motion snapped, 
The second one is post routes and corner routes are the biggest where the biggest variance lies. Um, you know, those are the those are the bigger things that you want to look at. You really want to try to find like this like this right here. This tight doubles on that corner route on the far left is 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 a little bit deeper than most corner routes. We could actually use it as a post route and a corner route um, because we could motion him to the left, we could motion him to the right, we could do some different things like that. The problem is, even though that's fun and unique and nice, there's no real complement. Um, so, for example, if if we went, if we motioned that receiver to the outside, well, we don't have a play outside of this PA wide receiver cross, but the guy doesn't go deep enough. They don't have another play that he could really do anything with. So it's just, it to me it makes it it makes it really pointless. Um, doubles weak, and you just go through. Um, so we'll just look. Uh, we'll probably go. We'll, we'll probably end up going back to that single back bunch. You want to go through what you'll find though. Also, uh, what, what I would like you guys to look at here, just kind of notice how many times the same same at least kind of concepts are in the same every formation. So stick is pretty much in every formation. Uh, PA slide is in most like these. These are very very simple concepts. Um, now this high low dig play is interesting, but doesn't have any complement whatsoever. So bunch offsets actually really interesting to me, uh, just because it's a, a bunch formation. The PA skins dig is is interesting. And combine it with the curl flat, you could do some things. They have the verticals, skins deep dig, have all these different things. Uh, let's see. We'll go over this one. So fork wheel. That's a really powerful play. You can do a lot with that. Um, you've got the post route on the left. You got corner route, and then another post route on the right side if you wanted to do something. You have C routes here, corner strike. So you could literally just run this. You could run corner strike, and then you could run fork wheel and inside zone, and that would be a pretty good offense. And I'm just telling you that just because just from just from playing Madden a lot. Wide trips open. This is probably the most interesting formation to me. It's very unique to the Redskins playbook. Not every team has this formation. So if we looked at this, PA switch shot, you have a post route on the right side. You have that deep, you have the wheel route. A bunch of really nice uh, routes on that play. And then if we had something that we could just kind of maybe be a counter play, wide receiver fork. So if we looked at, we have corner strike. So th this is probably the formation I kind of want to work with a little bit. So uh, let's come out in wide receiver fork. I'm going to go ahead and flip it just because when I have trips, I like my trips to be on the left side of the field. It's just kind of a, a, a thing that I like to do. But anyways, once you've come to this conclusion of you, you've decided, okay, this is the formation that I want to work on. Do not work on any other formation for your practice session. You only want to focus on one thing. Um, very, very simple and very, very long. So you just want to kind of go through and test it out and see how it does. So, like, we'll just do some inside zone here just to see how the run works. You know, can we cut it back? Can we do this? Can we do that? Just kind of running it through. Um, you want to check too. Uh, so we're in. Let's. We're in cover four right now. This route right here is very powerful. But the cool part about wide receiver fork that nobody nobody seems to really come to because a lot of people have gotten away from this play. Every single route on here is usable. Um, you know, and you could do a lot. So. You have two guys that can motion here. You have Williams, who is interesting. You have Elliott. You want to check also where everybody motions. You just want to know. So if I, if I motion Elliott right, that's where he's going. If I motion him to the left, I, he probably is going to stay in the backfield. Um, yeah, he'll just go to the other side, which could be kind of neat because uh, if you want to mess around with trying to fumble the snap. But anyways, then you want to check your quick audible. So as you see here, we have that, that PA switch shot play. Now, this is really cool. Um, because it's it, it's going to be your kind of counterplay to wide receiver fork. So so wide receiver fork is this. Um, you have uh, Cole Beasley breaking on a corner route. Now we're going to go to PA switch shot. The really, excuse me, the really big thing that's going to change is Terrence Williams is going to go um, on a nice little route out to the outside there. What we're going to do with Ezekiel Elliott is we're going to place him on an in route, just a quick route, and he's the first read, and you just kind of read it. And what you want to do is try to figure out how consistent can you use or catch that route with Terrence Williams. Uh, but you just run through it, and then you just try it against a bunch of different defenses. Um, but again, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that I want you to walk away with from this, um, so what we would do is we would run through this, and we'd see, okay, so I got wide receiver fork working pretty well. I got, And then um, the next thing we would do, we would check four verticals and see how we would utilize it. 
doesn't look very good to me. Uh, stick is, you know, kind of iffy. PA switch spot will be the only play that we really go to consistently in our quick audibles. Um, but whatever, the cool part about it is we're going to be able to throw that wheel route. I really like the way the wheel, wheel route works when you use it in combination with a, um, with a, uh, a post route. But then after we did that, after we went through and tested it against all the coverages, tried to find out the weaknesses of the play, uh, tried to figure out that, then what we would do is, is we would come back to the drawing board. So we'd get back in our, our uh, playbook here, and we try to ask ourselves, basically, what is the defense going to what is the defense going to do to take away wide receiver fork? And what are we going to do to counter it? So you would go through, you'd look at wide receiver fork for a second, and you would pretty much come to the conclusion that you have two routes breaking on the inside. Now you need something that's going to attack them strong to the outside. Corner strike, in my opinion, is one of the better plays for that. So you have that PA play in your quick audibles too. Uh, in case you wanted to use those combinations, but then you have these C routes um, that you can use at any time. This route to Zeke Elliott is really effective against Tampa too, and that's how you would kind of start to build these blocks. Um, and and then you know we would we would kind of check some things out. So Witten is normally on an out route, he'll be on an in route. Cole Beasley's normally normally on a corner route, he'll be you know you can do a lot with Cole Beasley. I would recommend putting him on uh, either a streak route or an out route, just something simple. Um, that way, you're, you're, cause, cause you, because you, what's going to happen is they will devote a lot of attention to stopping Cole Beasley because he's on that solid corner route. And then eventually what you can do is use him somewhat as a decoy. As you see here, the primary target on this play is is really Terrence Williams um, on that C route. So, But that's kind of the basic thing. But, but the biggest takeaway that I wanted to offer you guys today is whenever you go into practice mode in Madden 18, whenever you start – learning whenever you start trying to practice and train focus on training for uh, application not just for fun because it's fun to come in here and kind of tinker and try to figure things out but it doesn't actually translate to wins and losses unless you're able to execute under pressure and that's why most people waste their time in practice mode the champions the people that win money play in this game they maximize their time in practice mode and they actually minimize it too so by minimizing their time, so what you would, what I would recommend is, again, I'm going to give you a journaling exercise in the bottom that you can, these are just questions that you can ask yourself as you're doing this. But what I would recommend is trying to figure out how do I shorten my practice sessions to, to no more than 15 to 20 minutes. That's, that's how long it should take um, once a week, okay, once a week. And the reason I say that is is because you should, know, should, should spend the majority of your time uh, practicing in an actual game environment, not practicing your plays, but practicing your reads, practicing your fundamentals. Okay, so those are just some of the takeaways that I wanted to offer you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, if this video was helpful to you, then I would ask that you subscribe to my YouTube channel because we're going to be coming out with Madden 18 videos, tips, tricks, guides, uh, sessions all season long. So be sure to subscribe. That way you're updated for that information.